All right, it is nine o'clock and I think we are ready to start. Hello everyone, my name is Maxine D. I'm gonna be one of your instructors today. Um, I am a TPAC coach at Oakdale Elementary. And then we've got two other lovely ladies with us and I'm gonna let them introduce themselves. Hi everybody, uh, my name is Shanda Antuna and I am a ed tech coach at Brookwood, Copperview and Sandy Elementaries. I'll turn it to Stephanie for a second. Hi, I'm Stephanie Glover. I am an ed tech coach at Lone Peak Canyon View and Butler Elementary, and I will be answering any questions you have in the chat. All right, so before we even start, we want to make sure that we're giving you the learning intention so you know exactly what you're getting into. So today we are going to set up a homepage using the style guide, create Canvas modules, um, import sandbox or prior courses. So courses that you've done last year, or if you had sandbox courses from years prior, we'll show you how to import that content. Um, and also using Canvas Commons and using the coveted copy to incentive features to share content. So our success criteria for today is I know I am successful when my navigation and modules are set up and functional. And because it is only 30 minutes, it's this is more of a how to, but it will be recorded this entire mini PD that you can reference to at any given point in time, or you can email the three of us and your ed tech coach or your achievement coach, and they'll be able to help you too with your Canvas setup. Um, with everything, we always try to relate it back to the MTSS framework. And so the one that I highlighted because it stood out the most to me is teacher clarity and explicit instructions. We want to make sure that when our students are going into our Canvas page, they know exactly what they're going to do, how they're going to do it, and what activities that they're going to complete. So without further ado, let's get started. Um, but I guess before we even get started, do you guys have any questions? We good? Awesome. All right, so I'm just gonna go into a brand new Canvas course because it's like we are setting it up from scratch. So if I go into courses, or I can go into all courses and add a course from there, or from my dashboard, I can just scroll down and start a new course. So I'm just gonna call this my demo course for today. And usually when you get your brand new Canvas course, it Oops, I'm using somebody else's course because I'm acting as them. All right, when you get your brand new course, it's gonna look like this. And sometimes we have no idea what to do, but the first thing that I always like to think of is create a homepage, create a base. So to do that, what we're gonna do is right here on the side, we're gonna click on pages. And it says there's no pages created, so you can go ahead and add one right over here. Or you can use this blue button right here, so plus page. Whichever one, there is no wrong way. Then up here, you are going to type in home page. And I usually like to type in my last name because when you import templates over, and Shanda will kind of dive in it further, but when you import templates over, all the home pages are called home pages. So you kind of want to differentiate the home page that you created from the templates, especially if you lean more towards the one that you created. So I say home page Miss D or whatever your heart's desire. So according to um, Canyons District Style Guide, we need a few things on our homepage so that we remain consistent with all of the other Canyons teachers. And we're also making sure that students know exactly what they're going into and it's engaging and like they kind of have that friendly feel instead of a page full of text. So we want to make sure that we have a welcome message, a multimedia element, um we an about me a schedule a classroom disclosure if we have it or a syllabus and then how to get a hold of the teacher contact information information so that is the basics of the canvas 
I, homepage. So with the welcome message, it could be as simple as welcome to Ms. D's third grade classroom. And I have found that banners are like the best way to give out a welcome message. If you have like a Bitmoji banner or if you have like a banner that you created outside, you can use that. Or if you just want like a plain header, I'm gonna show you how to do that with a table. So if we want this to just be a block of color and just say, hey, welcome to my homepage, you can go ahead and add a one row and one column table. So you click on table, hover over table, and select one row, one column. And then here you can type in welcome to Misty's classroom, or you can just copy and paste so you don't waste all that time typing in everything. And from here, you can change your font, you can change your size, you can change your color. So basically, it's pure experimentation. Now for the fun part, to change this table into a color. What you want to do is make sure that you're selected into this table. And right here, there is a kind of like a pop-up menu bar where the first icon says table properties and this is what you're gonna want to click. And it'll open up this awesome pop-up with general and advance. When you click on advance, it's gonna ask you if you want a, to change the border style, to change the border color or change the background color. And so this is where you can make your headers or your welcome message, I guess, more eye-popping. So there are two ways to get a border color. The first way is to just type in the color of your choice. So I'm just gonna do green and green. I'm just gonna change the border style to solid. So this makes it so that I don't have a black border around it or some other weird color, unless you want you know, to alternate colors. Once you click okay, it'll automatically change. And if the text is too dark, you can go ahead and highlight that text and then change the color as well. So it's really up to your imagination. Um, I want the center, so I'm just gonna make sure that I align that to center. If you want a fancy color or like a color that's not red, blue, green, yellow, orange, then you can insert a hex code. And a hex code is a series of letters and numbers that formulate into a color somehow. But all you're gonna do for that is click on the plus button, type in hex code, over here to HTML hex code colors, whatever website actually. And then it'll give you a swatcher tool where you can select the color that you want. And I want more of a pastel. Hold on. Let me turn on my lights. Okay, a pastel like green. And right over here where it says hex, you're just gonna copy that and make sure that you copy the hashtag with it. And then go back to your canvas and we're gonna follow the same steps. Click on the table, select table properties, select advance, and then instead of pasting in green or typing in green, you're gonna paste in that hashtag hex code. And when you click okay, it'll change to that color. Um, so that is the best way that I have found in order to like separate your elements. So your welcome message, your about me, your schedule, your classroom disclosure, or your even your contact information. With multimedia elements, what, really that saying is adding icons and adding a banner. And I would suggest just pulling that from Canvas comments because it's gonna be a lot easier. But if you have things that you have created, you can go ahead and just insert it or down insert it using this, these steps. So to insert, any kind of picture, so a banner or icons, you are just gonna click on images right here off on the right upper hand side. And you're gonna click on upload a new image. And then you're gonna choose a file. And then you are gonna go ahead and select a file that you want. So I've got a welcome banner that I created. So I'm gonna go ahead and select it, open. And a lot of people are like, oh no, it's not uploading, it's because Canvas requires you to do an alt text, so make sure to name it, so banner, and then click upload. 
And once it is done uploading, that's how you insert a multimedia image. So any icons, any banners, um, or even a file. With About Me, it's just a short description of you, your class. I recommend always doing a video so your students can see your face. So if you have a Screencast-O-Matic account or a Loom account or even just a phone, you're, you're able to upload an About You and just describing what you, your students are expecting in your class and that will like give them kind of, uh, hey, that's my teacher, I know her, this is her Canvas page. Um, the next is just a schedule. Um, there's two different ways that you can do a schedule. Um, the first way is just a list of the times, the dates, and the activities. And I'm just going to go ahead and show you an example of what that looks like. Or there is a way that you can separate it by subject and by subject and by days. So the first one that I'm gonna show you is separated by subject and by days. So I'm gonna go in here. And if we scroll down, this is just a normal table. And as we did it before, we're just inserting a table from this option. But right over here, you can put the subjects, you can put the week, I mean the days, and then you can add each assignment over here that students can click into. Um, another suggestion would be, let's go back to the blueprint, would be to just have a list of your activities for the week or even the month. So I'm just gonna show you a weekly schedule overview where it's week one, this is what we're gonna do for math, or you can even add ELA content depending on what subject you teach. So there are different, ways that you can do your schedule as long as your students know, all right, this week I'm focusing on this. I need to make sure I get this and this done. This will help them really focus in on their Canvas assignments or their modules. Um, and then really just adding your classroom disclosure syllabus so they know what the expectations are. Just like in a classroom, there should also be digital expectations and then your contact information, if they need any help, how are they gonna contact you? Is it through a Google Meet? Is it in person, your office hours? Or is it through your email or your office number? So it's just really important that we have those elements. Um, so yeah, so that is basically the first thing, which is setting up a homepage using the style guide. Um, the second is creating a Canvas module. And I'm just gonna show you how to quickly do that. So to create a new module, you're just gonna go ahead and click on the plus module. Let me back up. We need to go into modules first, right over here. And then once you click on modules on the left-hand navigation bar, you're gonna click on the upper right-hand corner, the plus module. And how I like to picture modules is, modules are all of my folders. And anything that goes within the modules are the files in my folder. So the assignments and the pages and the content. So modules are just basically the folder that houses all of the information. So there are two ways that I've seen teachers do module. One is through content. So they name their module ELA, math, social studies, science. Another way that I've seen is teachers labeling modules per week. So depending on your um, learning style or your teaching, not learning style, teaching style and the way you organize things, um, it's really up to you. If you're putting a lot of content in that you want students to be completing on a daily or weekly basis, I strongly recommend that you do it by week. So just, I know it's not March, but that's what popped into my head. So March 31st, April 4th, I don't know if that's a week, but let's pretend that's a week and I'm just gonna add a module. And within that module, you can put in all of your assignments for your ELA, for your social studies, for your math, and you can separate it using headers. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click on the plus button right here because I want to add a header. So I want my students to know this is an assignment for ELA. So if I click on plus, and instead of adding an assignment, I'm gonna add a text header. And that header is ELA. 
then that makes it so the students know that anything under ELA are ELA assignments. To add an assignment, you're gonna do the same thing as adding a text header. You're gonna click on add, scroll up to assignment. If you have existing assignments, you can add that. If you want a new assignment, you can go ahead and create a new assignment and add the item. Another thing to organize your modules is making sure to indent it. So I know that writing is under ELA, but what if there's that long list and then we have a math header on the way to, I guess, visually segregate those two content areas is by shifting the assignments over to the right hand side by clicking on the three dots and increasing the indent. And that makes it so, stu oh, what did I just do? Students, and you know that, all right, writing is under ELA. Um, do we have any questions on creating modules or anything so far that I've talked about? Um, Heather, you said that, where do you find the schedule template? Katie, oh, my bad. So you don't need a schedule anymore, but it is nice to have. Um, I just made it using a table. So I'm just gonna quickly show you how to do that. If we go to home or to my, let's just do it in the writing because it's the same format for everything. But if you click on table and then just hover over table, you can select how many days. So there's five days. So I select six columns and then depending on how many subjects I want, then I just choose how many rows. Um, the way that I merge that top part so that it has my week on it, I just select the first, highlight everything in the first row, click on table again, hover over cell, and click on merge cell. And that merges that together so it's not that choppy block if you want to put in your weeks on top. Any other questions before we move on? Awesome, possum. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the time over to Shanda. All right. Thank you, Maxine. Okay. Um, so will you give me a thumbs up if everybody can hear me? Just wanna make sure that my sound is working. Thanks guys. All right, so um, I am going to be talking about how to import content to your course, as well as get content from Canvas Commons and how to use the copy to or send to features in Canvas. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen with you. Just a moment. All right, I gotta find the right one here. I promise I have this up, okay. All right, so I am in, this is in comments right now. I'm just gonna go to my dashboard. All right, and the first thing that I'm gonna show you is how to import um, content from another course. So I'm gonna show you from a blank course. I'm just gonna start this blank course and that's what I'm gonna name it. And when you have a brand new course, as Maxine showed you, you kind of have this blank create a new module page. But if you already have a course created like a sandbox course or a course that you used last year and you don't wanna start from scratch, you have the option to import into this course. Um, so you can do this a couple different ways. Um, I'm gonna go to settings. And from settings, you're gonna see a button over here that says import course content. So I'm gonna click on import course content. And then I need to pick my content type and I am gonna copy another Canvas course. 
From here, I need to search for my course. Now, I will be able to search through any courses that I have been added to as a teacher, okay? Um, or courses that I have created myself. So I'm gonna go ahead and look for one of my own. Let's see, go tech. There it is, okay. So this is another course that I've created and I'm just gonna pick that one right there. And if I want to do the entire course, I'm just gonna do all content. I also have the option to select specific content from the course and I will show you that in just a moment. So if I want the entire course, I'm gonna go ahead and just click all content and then import. You do have the option to adjust events and due dates that you may have had from the previous course. So once I've clicked that, it's just automatically gonna start running You'll see my little status bar over here. And when this is complete, I can go back to my home page. We'll give it two seconds there. And you'll see that it's no longer that blank course. It's taken all of the content from my previous course. Um, and this does bring over the modules. It brings over the assignments. It brings over everything that I have already created in that, that course. Now, if I just wanted to bring over some specific content that way, I'm gonna go back to where I was in settings and import course content. And this time I'm gonna continue to copy a Canvas course. I'm gonna find that same course, tech tools. But this time I will select specific content instead of all content. Click on import. And then you'll notice this time it brings up this button that says select content. So I click on that. And then I see all of the different things within my course. So I can see the modules, the assignments, all of those things. If I want to just do specific modules, I click the down arrow and I pick the module that I want and that will bring everything within that module. If I want all of my modules, I can just click on this. If I want all of my assignments, I click on that. But if I just want some specific assignments, I can click the down arrow and continue to find the assignment that I am looking for. Once I've picked one, I'm just gonna pick a random one here. I click select content and then it will do the same thing that it did before where it will queue it and then it will run and bring it over. Okay, so that's how you import content. Um, the next thing that I wanna show you is how to get content from comments, Canvas comments. So you'll notice on your little toolbar on the left-hand side, you have a comments button. So if I go to comments, Within here, there is all kinds of material that other people have created that I can go in and I can use um, in my own course. So you'll want to use this filter to make sure that you're getting the kind of stuff that you want. You can filter by lots of different things. You can filter by only the Canyon School District approved resources. You can filter by things that are shared with just Canyon School District, um, all. So I'm gonna just do Canyon School District right now. One of the easiest ways to start a Canvas course from scratch is to use a template. Um, so I just did Canyon School District and templates, and I'm gonna come over here, it's already given me some here, um, but you can find lots of different starting points for your Canvas course. Um, the template's gonna give you, like Maxine talked about that uh, multimedia piece, I'm gonna just pick this one right now. So you can see it's got um, a home page, it's got different assignment templates, it's got quizzes templates, um, lots of things to kind of get you started as you get going with your um, course. So say this is the one that I want to use, I can bring this over to my Canvas course by clicking on this import download button right here. Um, it kind of gives me a preview up here of what this looks like. I can preview the individual things by going through this list over here. And then I can see, you know, what it's gonna lo look like specifically. Um, but then when I'm ready, I'm gonna go ahead and click on this import download button. And then I wanna say which course I'm going to have it go to. Um, for this one, I'm just gonna go ahead and go back to my tech tools course. Actually, I'm gonna use this bogus course right now. Okay, and that way I know I'm not gonna interrupt anybody else's content. And then import into course. 
you can see it started the import. Sometimes it might take a few minutes, but if I go back to my dashboard and then I find that course, mine was the bogus, this one right here, it will start bringing it in here. Now it does take a second. So let's see if it started bringing it in yet. Yeah, okay. So here are those different modules. And if I wanna get that home page, um, it would be in the pages. And then I need to click view all pages. And like Maxine told you, when it has a template, it comes up as home page. And I just click on these little three dots right here and say use as front page. And if I go home, you can see that template has come up. Um, these templates will often give you instructions on what to do. It gives you ideas on um, different buttons that you can use. A lot of times within your modules, you'll see that they have um, notes for the administrators, how to customize it, the different icons and banners, and how you might be able to change the wording on that. So you can go through these different pages to help you customize your templates. You can do the same thing in Commons with lots of different content. So if you have, you're looking for a certain quiz and maybe you have a, you know, you know somebody at another school who shared a quiz that they made to Commons, um, you can go in and search for their quiz and bring it in in the same way. Um, in interest of time, I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the last part of our uh, learning intentions there, and that's to be able to direct share and um, send to from a Canvas course. So I'm going to go back into my Tech Tools course here. Um, so if there is something that I've created and I want to share it with my teammate, I can do that um, by going in. I'm just using modules right now. You can do this from pages, you can do it from quizzes, you can do it from assignments. Um, and I'll show you those in just a moment, but I'm gonna click on the little three dots next to what it is I want to share. And, um, no, that one doesn't have it. Let me come down here a little bit here. Of course, these ones aren't gonna have it. Hold on just a minute. Okay, so within my quizzes, maybe you can't do it for modules, I apologize. Within my quizzes, I see I have this little send to button right here. So if I click on send to, I can start typing the teammate or whoever it is that I want to send this item to, click on their name and click on send. And then when she gets that, she'll get a little notification here on her account that will tell her somebody sent something and she has to accept it. And then it will um, import into her course, whichever course she chooses. Um, you'll notice it also had this button that says copy to. This is if you wanna just copy it to a course that you already have, okay? Um, so that can be really useful when you are wanting to send something to a teammate, but you don't wanna go through comments. You don't wanna save something to comments and have them come and get it from comments. You can just send it directly to them. Um, and you should be able to do the same thing here from assignments, the three dots, send to, copy to whichever you choose. Okay. All right, we have just a couple minutes here and I'm gonna see if there are any questions. It looks like there was a lot in the chat. So uh, Stephanie, I'm gonna see if she has anything that I need to address from the chat. I think I got everything, but feel free to jump on and ask a question to Maxine or Shanda if you are still wanting some instructions or information about anything that they went over. And Stephanie, will you actually go over some of those chat questions just verbally so it appears on the video feed when we post it to Canyon's U? Just to answer some of those questions verbally. You bet. Let me go up to the top. Um. Where did you find the schedule template? So there isn't a schedule template. You create it with the grid. Um, and Maxine showed how to do that in the video a couple of times. Would you suggest creating a new course for each school year or can we use the same one from, from last year? And I said, I would suggest having your own course just so that it doesn't disappear. Um, and you can always keep working on it. It's really easy to copy over. 
So I always have my own stuff and then I would copy it over when my Skyward Sync would become live, which is, you know, we're waiting on numbers. So we, a lot of teachers don't even have the Skyward Sync courses yet. How do you delete a course that you messed up and no longer want? Um, open settings in course navigation, click the settings link, permanently delete course, click the delete this course link, delete course, click the delete course button, and then view the confirmation message. Courses are not deleted from an account unless done so by you or another user at your institution. Um, I like the idea of starting from scratch. I feel like my other course is messy. Okay, that wasn't a question, but it was a good comment. I think I wanna change my modules to be weeks, but I had made them subjects. Would I just delete the modules and start new ones? Please, no. <laughs> you can drag and drop. You can make new modules. They move really easily. They copy over really easily. So save yourself the work on that. Um, and then Katie had said you could rename the modules too. And then how are the students directed to the course of our choosing? You'll get an automatic Skyward Sync and then you copy what you want over to the course that was Skyward Synced by Canyons District. And then Maxine said templates are the best if you're starting from scratch and I agree. And then I wanna link my Google Classroom on my Canvas course. How do I do that? You can create a link on your homepage to link to your Google Classroom. Click the link icon paste or type the URL you want to link into the URL field, click the insert link button, and the text will flash yellow before turning into the hyperlink. Um, I do have a comment real quick about deleting modules. Um, I've had a couple of teachers that have accidentally deleted their modules, but have no fear, all of the content still stays within Canvas. So if you, for instance, say, oh, I don't want this module and delete it, and then just it dawns on you that oh, I actually need those assignments and pages. It's still within assignments and pages. Nothing gets deleted. It just gets deleted from the modules page, if that makes sense. Um, another thing that I forgot to go over was the navigation because Stephanie mentioned it, but there is also a navigation style guide for Canvas. And I'm just gonna show you that really quickly. If you go into, D, um, if you go into your Canvas, co um, Canvas course, and right here under settings, if you click on settings, and then on one of the tabs, it'll say navigation. If you click on here, this is where you can drag, drag and drop your navigation that the students see. So we want to hide everything except for, and correct me if I'm wrong, Katie, Shander, Stephanie, home, then announcements, then modules, and there was one more, was it grades or syllabus? It's great. Grades. Grades, okay, I had it right. And it's super important that you scroll down and save it because if you don't, it won't save the navigation on the side. So yeah. Okay, if there aren't any other questions, we will go ahead and let you go. If you do have questions, feel free to email us, maxine.d at canyonsdistrict.org, shanda.antuna at canyonsdistrict.org, or stephanie.glover at canyonsdistrict.org. Thank you guys for joining us today. Thank you, thank you. Bye.